in this video I will be reading a very special book and that is A Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Hand. Elizabeth Hand was authorized by Shirley Jackson's estate to essentially write a sequel to The Haunting of Hill House. My expectations for this book are through the roof. By the end of this vlog, I will be able to give you my opinion if I feel like this book did justice to The Haunting of Hill House. If this book disappoints me, you may be in store for some ranting in this vlog, but I truly hope that it won't. I think just the fact that it's going to be set back at Hill House means that this book already has an edge and I just hope that it will captivate me. If you want to know if this book is worth your time, if it honors Shirley Jackson and the amazing story that is The Haunting of Hill House, stick around and let's go on this journey together. If anybody watched this video, I talked about how I had one final book that I had pre-ordered this year. I did ask people to guess what that book was. If you clicked on this video, you know at this point what the book is that I'm talking about, and that is A Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Hand. I adore haunted house stories, and I am just so excited to hopefully immerse myself back in the Haunting of Hill House atmosphere and vibes. Now, I did want to make this a very special video because the Haunting of Hill House has made such an impact on me this year. So I did actually order a few more things that I'm going to unbox in this video. These are all things that I purchased on Etsy. So I have three packages right here I'm going to open with you guys. The first, package is actually from Derby UK, which is so cool. And here is the unveiling. Ah! Oh my gosh, that's so cool. And it just shows like the haunted house here and says by Shirley Jackson, 1959. That is awesome. I'm going to wear this all the time. Love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's go ahead and open the next package. This one was sent from Poland, which is also super cool. Oh, this one is so cool. Okay, here is the reveal of this one. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. And I adore this cover, this edition of The Haunting of Hill House. If I ever found this edition, I would just die of happiness. I think it is gorgeous. That is awesome. I love this shirt. Okay, and the final thing I ordered is this little goodie right here. So this is actually a art print. I'm supposing this is Eleanor. We're seeing walking into Hill House. And on the back, it is signed by the artist. So that is so cool. But I need to go out and find myself a frame for this art print because that is stunning. And it's definitely going somewhere in my living room, somewhere around the bookshelf. I adore this. For the rest of the video, you are probably going to see me wearing all of my Shirley Jackson merch. Other than that, I'm going to start researching frames for my art print and probably get into reading A Haunting on the Hill. I will talk to you guys once I have read a little bit into this book and I have some thoughts to share. I've got my tea. I've got my Shirley Jackson shirt on, and I am here to have my first update of my progress reading A Haunting on the Hill. How are you guys doing today? Let me know in the comments if you guys are doing great, and if you're not doing great, I hope you start doing better. It is currently Friday, November 17th. 17 or 18? It's Friday, okay? And I am very happy about that. I currently am not doing great. Let's do a little life update, shall we? The past few weeks, basically from the end of October up until now, have been very stressful at work. There's been a lot of different things going on, dramas, and it's been pretty difficult. I had something pretty frustrating happen to me at work. I've been trying to read this book today because I need to finish this before the end of the month. But because of some things at work, I've just been feeling really sick to my stomach. 
And I just want to say if anybody else out there is going through a difficult time, if you are struggling with different things in your life, I hope that it turns around. I hope you find some joy in your day, whatever day you're watching this. When difficult things happen in my life, I have a tendency to spiral and hyper focus on that thing, let it ruin my day, let it ruin my week. And like I said, really spiral from there. I want to try not to stay in that mood and that mindset. I made myself a nice tea. I love black tea with honey is like my favorite drink of choice. So I'm having myself a nice hot tea. I did my makeup. I put on my Shirley Jackson shirt and I am trying to finish this book today. I am currently at page 124. It's 326, 322 pages. It's reading very, very fast, which I very much appreciate. I have a lot of books I am trying to finish before the end of the year. The chapters are very, very short. Chapters are like two, three, four pages max. So that is also probably why this book is reading so quickly. Do I feel like this is reminding me of Shirley Jackson's writing style. Do I feel like this is a good follow-up to The Haunting of Hill House? For the first 55 pages, okay, I really was in the vibe. I was feeling the Shirley Jackson atmosphere. Elizabeth Hand was really being successful, in my opinion, at evoking Shirley Jackson's signature descriptive writing style crafting these beautiful metaphors and descriptions, I was really feeling the Shirley Jackson atmosphere coming through the writing of this book, which was so amazing. It feels so special to be reading this, honestly, because Shirley Jackson is no longer with us. Obviously, we will never get another Shirley Jackson book, but this feels so special because it feels like, it feels like getting another book from a favorite author, which I love. So my reading experience so far is going pretty well. The one thing that I am finding to be a little bit of a critique of this book is, so like I said, I am on page 124. By this point, the book has fully moved into Hill House. The characters are within the house. They are staying at the house. It took up until almost page 100 or so for us to fully get into Hill House. I think for this sort of book that the whole draw of this book is that it is the first authorized look back into Hill House. So we want to see Hill House highlighted primarily, right? It took us a little bit longer than I would have liked, than I feel like was necessary for this story to get into Hill House. And now that we are in Hill House, I am still finding there to be so, so, so much of a focus on something I've talked about a few times that is a bit of a pet peeve of mine. And that focus is on a lot of character background. I don't think we need so much character work into each and every side character that is in this novel. At this point, the novel has started to flip character POVs, so I can see why the author is trying to flesh out her characters a bit more. I think for me though, I would love if we could just follow the story through the one character perspective and let Hill House be the highlight of this novel. Right now, the highlight of this novel is these characters and their goal is to put on this play. They are all actors, theater performers, musicians, playwrights, and they are trying to put on this play. So the highlight and focus of this book is definitely these characters, their relationship with one another. And I would just like a little bit more of Hill House, more of a focus on that. I'm not disliking this at all. That is just one little critique I've noticed so far because I am, like I said, I'm over 100 pages into this book now. I am going to try to finish this book by the end of the day. I do have something to show you guys. I did haul this art print that I ordered on Etsy in earlier in this vlog and I did order a frame for it. So I want to show you guys the frame. I actually ordered two frames because I had another picture I needed to 
put in a frame. And that is the print that you got for attending the Eras Tour film. So I have put this on my bookshelf. I don't care that it's not book related. I love Taylor Swift and this is going to be living on my bookshelf proudly displayed. The other frame I ordered is also from Amazon and this frame is so nice and high quality. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my art print in. I am now up to page 173, chapter 47, and we are focusing more on Hill House. There have been some pretty creepy scenes. There's a lot of really cool sound effects in this book. If you listen to the audiobook of episode 13 by Craig DeLuey and you enjoyed that audiobook, I think that you would really have fun with this audiobook because it's similar where there is a lot of sound effects. The one thing I will say with the audiobook is there is a lot of singing in this book. I liked it at first because one of the characters makes up these songs and the audio narrator will sing the songs. And at first I was kind of vibing with it. I thought it was cool. And now I kind of wish we could tone it down. Like the singing is just getting to the point where it's a little bit over the top for me. I can see a lot of people not liking that aspect of it, but I am really glad that we are focusing a bit more on some of the creepy haunting stuff. Another thing I will say is I'm getting tired of talking about this play that they're putting on. Like obviously that is kind of the point. They're, they're staying at Hill House because they are making this play and I'm just kind of tired of hearing about it. I don't know. I don't care about their play. I have about 150 pages left. So hopefully in the next few hours, I will finish this book and I will let you guys know what I think. I really do not want to be coming on camera right now, but I'm committed to finishing this reading vlog. So here I am, even though most people don't even watch reading vlogs, I started this video, so we have to finish it. I am in a absolute rock bottom, horrible mood right now. Remember when I talked about earlier about when I get in a bad mood, I will spiral? Well, it's happened and my mood has just gotten worse and worse. I feel incredibly angry inside. I feel incredibly angry and frustrated. It's Sunday afternoon. And the only thing I could think about is having to go to work tomorrow and how much I don't want to go to work tomorrow and be around the people I work with. I finished A Haunting on the Hill the day, the other day, the other clip when I said I was trying to finish it that day, I did. I'm also at the point where I don't have any generosity left in me. I'm not feeling in a good mood and not feeling nice. So did I enjoy this book? It was okay. I think I'm rating it a three star. Did it live up to The Haunting of Hill House? No, absolutely not. It did not live up to The Haunting of Hill House. Did Elizabeth Hand do justice to Shirley Jackson? Not really, but did you expect her to? Was there any way that she was going to be able to? No, so I don't know why I'm even asking that question. The thing with this book is I absolutely despised the characters. These were all people who were supposed to be friends and they all treated each other terribly. These were people that if I knew them in real life, this would not be my vibe. This would not be my tribe of people. I would not get along with them. And so having to read a 300 plus page book about people that I could not stand took me on a journey that I did not want to go on. There's a lot of references to sex and drugs in this book and constantly making metaphors to this thing being like sex and these characters fantasizing about having sex with each other. How much sex and drugs before it's too much? That was not the vibe of 
The Haunting of Hill House. I hate cheating storylines and obviously that the same thing happened in The Haunting of Hill House where the house kind of enhanced everybody's personalities in a bad way. So I can see what Elizabeth Hand was going for by making her characters dumpster fires. But was it fun to read about? No. One of the absolute most garbage characters in this whole book, her name is Nisa. She is the partner, she is the girlfriend of the main character, Holly. Nisa was a trash bag. I hated her guts. I also hated the other friend Stevie's guts. This character, Nisa, was so obsessed with herself. She was so obsessed with her voice and singing. Do you know those people when you were in school who would just start singing like randomly in class? They would just start singing. Like nobody wants to hear you, please be quiet. And that was this character, Nisa. I got so tired of hearing about this play that these characters are trying to put on and how much work they're putting into their play. These characters are always having sex or thinking about having sex. And that did not ring true to me for something that Shirley Jackson would have done. I get that The Haunting of Hill House was published in the 60s. It was a different vibe back then. Sex was not talked about as much as it is today, but it just did not ring true. It did not feel like a sequel. It did not feel like a proper reimagining. You know what this felt like to me? It felt like a super cheap remake that slasher films get. So it's like Jurassic Park, okay? The Haunting of Hill House is Jurassic Park 1. This amazing, phenomenal, action-packed movie with a beautiful score, amazing effects, just stunning, right? Like a work of art, a masterpiece. And then we have Jurassic Park 2, Jurassic Park 3. We have all the remakes with Chris Pratt and it gets worse. It gets worse and worse and worse until we're at the point where all the remakes are just horrible B movies and nobody asked for this, okay? That's what this felt like to me. I wanted this book to get a lot more unhinged, okay? There is a little bit of unraveling in the last maybe 30 pages of this book and it wasn't enough. Elizabeth Hand needed to turn the notch up like five dials. That was what was reminiscent of The Haunting of Hill House to me, was that unhinged nature, the character starting to go off the rails, but it needed to start coming sooner. I needed less focus on Nisa's singing, on this stupid play that they're putting together, and start giving me these characters going off the rails. I think I'm rating this book a three star. Is it worth your time? I wouldn't. I wouldn't strongly recommend you read this book. If you love The Haunting of Hill House, you're probably curious, in which case, for sure, give it a try. Even if I had gone on the internet and watched somebody give a rant review about this book, I still would have read it because I love The Haunting of Hill House and I wanted to see what this author did with it. I was disappointed, but I don't think that I could have read this book and not have been disappointed. I don't think that this author was capable of doing justice to Shirley Jackson and writing a sequel to The Haunting of Hill House that was going to live up to it. I don't think there is an author who could have done that. Am I inclined to go and read more books from Elizabeth Hand in the future? No. I recently went to a library book sale and I did find a book by Elizabeth Hand. It's this book right here, the book of Lamps and Banners. It's actually the fourth book in a series, so I had no idea that it was the fourth book in a series when I picked this up. I may just end up donating this straight to a little free library. I don't know. I don't know if I want to go on another journey with Elizabeth Hand. There were things about her writing that I did enjoy. She did have some pretty good imagery and creepy descriptions. I just, I just hated the characters that she created in this book. And maybe again, maybe that was the point. I get it, they're staying in Hill House and that's what Hill House does to people. But I feel like I just, I'm not interested, okay? This was like a one and done for me. You know what I can see in the future? I can see myself being embarrassed about this video in the future and not feeling so salty about it and taking out all my frustrations on Elizabeth Hand and this book and feeling a lot more generous towards it and towards the author. Sometimes 
your reading experience is affected by the mood that you are in. If you are in a terrible mood, if you had a terrible week, month, whatever, you are gonna take that mood into the books that you are reading and they're gonna be affected by that. So just take everything I'm saying right now with a grain of salt. Sometimes you just need to get it out, right? Most people don't put that on the internet, but I'm here to be honest with you guys and tell you how I am feeling. Honestly, when I think back on this book, I just, I get like bad vibes. This book is probably now gonna be synonymous with this horrible week. Ugh. And it gives me like the ick when I think about it. I don't have much else to say other than that. I will talk to you guys in the next one.